session we have talked about the tools of measurement which we use to calculate measurements in epidemiology. Today we are going to look at details of um, what measurements we use to compute morbidity and mortality statistics. Let's start with morbidity. Now to learn about measurements for morbidity, we need to understand two terminologies very clearly and they are quite confused about but there are certain ways by which we can remember these two terms and these two terms are incidence and prevalence. Now what's incidence? When we talk about a disease in a population, the number of new cases of a disease occurring in the given population over a defined period of time constitutes incidence. Please mark the word new in this case. New means the cases which are diagnosed or detected from the point of study. Which also means that the cases which are already existing in the community are not included for calculation of incidence. Incidence is expressed in the form of a rate. So going back to the concept of a rate, it needs to be having a denominator and a multiplier. So for calculation of incidence of a disease in a population, we consider the numerator as the number of new cases of the disease divided by the population at risk during that time period multiplied by any multiplier which we choose, either 100 or 1000 or 100,000. And incidence rate is expressed as per 100 or per 1000 or per 100,000 population. So for example, if we are considering incidence of dengue in a given area during the period from June to September, so our incidence rate for dengue will be expressed as number of new cases of dengue occurring from June to September divided by the population of that area from June to September over 100 people or 1000 people or 100,000 people as the multiplier is needed. So that's about incidence. Then what's prevalence? When we look at prevalence, we need to look at not only the new cases but also, also the already existing cases of the disease during a given time in the specified population. So the difference between incidence and prevalence calculation is incidence will only include new cases whereas prevalence will include not only the new but also the existing cases of the disease. So for the formula for prevalence goes like this, number of cases of a disease in a given population during a specified time period. When I say cases, it means new cases plus the existing cases over the population of that area during the same time period multiplied by the 100 or 1000 or 100,000 population. So that's the definition for prevalence. Now when we consider prevalence, we have got two types of prevalence which are generally considered. One is known as the point prevalence and the other is known as the period prevalence. Now the difference between the two lies in the time specification. When we consider point prevalence, we include all the cases of the disease being studied during that point in time when the study is being conducted. Whereas when we consider period prevalence, we consider the number of cases of the disease during the time interval or the period during which the study is being conducted. So that's the difference with respect to time when we consider point prevalence and period prevalence. These are the common measures of morbidity which are used. In addition to these rate calculations, we have certain specific rates which apply to certain diseases. Attack rate is one of the examples. Attack rate is a special type of incidence rate. So in other words, attack rates take into consideration new cases of a disease. And attack rates are specifically used when we are looking at cases such as food poisoning or diarrheal diseases which are sudden and acute in nature. So attack rate basically is determined by considering the number of cases of, for example, in this case the food poisoning occurring in the given population during a specific time period divided by 
the population which is at risk of that disease during that time period. And please remember, attack rates are generally calculated for epidemics. So epidemics are the diseases which occur uh, in an unusual form, clearly in excess of the expected occurrence. So food poisoning is an example of an epidemic which if occurs, attack rate is calculated instead of an incidence rate. It is nothing but an incidence rate but it is a special type of incidence rate. Another terminology which is used for communicable diseases is known as secondary attack rate wherein the attacking power of the disease in terms of how many people are being affected after one case of the disease is detected is known as secondary attack rate. So how do we calculate the secondary attack rate? When calculating the secondary attack rate, we need to be very careful wherein our numerator is going to be all the people who have been affected after coming in contact with another person or the first case of the disease. And our denominator is also going to be the population which is the contacts during that period of time. Secondary attack rate is generally expressed as per 100 population. In other words, it can also be expressed as a percentage. Higher the secondary attack rate, higher is the communicability of the disease as it is said. Similarly, it applies to attack rate. Higher the attack rate, it means the disease is very powerful as compared to other diseases. So that's all about incidence and prevalence. This is what we have talked about the morbidity statistics or the morbidity indicators. Now when we look at measurement of mortality, we generally express them in the form of rates and ratios. Now when we calculate a rate as mentioned earlier, we need a numerator and a denominator. Now denominators which are used for calculation of mortality statistics differ depending on what we are trying to estimate. I will state with an example. The commonest rates which are considered taking all the whole population into consideration are known as crude rates. So if we take a mortality rate which is a crude rate, the best example is crude death rate. So when we talk about crude death rate, we talk about all the deaths occurring due to any disease in a given population during a time period and the denominator is formed by the total population at that point in time in the given geographic area. So what it means is that all the population of the area is taken into account not taking specifically age groups or sex groups or occupation groups into consideration. So whoever it is, whether it is a child, an adult, an old person, all form the denominator. And that's why the rate is labeled as a crude death rate. Now what is the significance of knowing whether a rate is a specific rate or a crude rate? Crude rates, if necessary for comparison, are quite difficult to estimate. The reason being, if we compare the crude rates for from one country to other, what happens is the population structure which is the denominator is going to differ, it's going to vary. Certain populations may have higher number of younger children in them. So the amount of deaths or the causes of deaths in this group are going to be different compared to another uh, area or another country wherein the population may be more of young adults or you know middle, in, uh, middle aged adults wherein the death rates are going to be low. So we need to be very careful while making comparisons if we use group death rates. So in order to eliminate this problem, it's better to use specific death rates. So when I say specific death rates, they are specific either to age, either to sex, either to cause. Cause specific death rates are very useful when we need to make comparisons between two different regions or two different countries because they help us know the structure of the population when we make comparisons. These are crude rates and specific rates. There are several examples which of mortality rates wherein we do not use population as the denominator. The best example for which is infant mortality rate. Infants are children who are less than one year of age. So if we want to look at the mortality rate among this population, our numerator is formed by the number of deaths amongst infants in a given time period in a given population 
and denominator is formed by total number of live births which have occurred in the same population during the same time period. Now this is quite tricky because we are trying to look at from the number of live births how many infants have died. So a child who was born alive at the age of one year, by the time the child completes one year, whether he is alive or dead, will then put him either in the numerator or the denominator category. One more common mistake which we make with reference to rates and ratios, especially with reference to mortality statistics, the classic example is maternal mortality. Maternal mortality is expressed as a rate most of the times in a wrong sense, reason being the denominator for maternal mortality calculation is the number of live births occurring in a given area during a given time period and the numerator is formed by the total number of deaths in mothers either during pregnancy or within 42 days after delivery. Now this if you look at logically is not a rate, it's a ratio because the numerator and the denominator are not related to each other. So point to be noted, if we calculate maternal mortality in terms of number of maternal deaths divided by the total number of live births during a specified time period, we calculate a maternal mortality ratio and not maternal mortality rate. So I think that's, um, that's in a nutshell if we have to compile everything. What we have seen today is measures of morbidity and mortality. Under morbidity, we have talked about incidence, prevalence and the special types of rates for incidence and prevalence. And under mortality, we have talked about crude and specific rates and special types of rates. So that's all for now from me. So take care, bye and please post your comments and do subscribe to our channel. Thank you.